tonight. So they implement a dog bylaw with a bite. And tons of support for the Regina Food Bank. The CTV News Late Edition. Good evening. Revenue Canada employees have reached a tentative agreement with the federal government tonight. The deal is a four-year agreement with wage increases of 9.65% retroactive to November of last year. Today in Regina, picket lines were up again in front of federal government buildings. Federal civil servants, including these at the RCMP Training Academy in Regina, were on the second day of the nationwide strike. Both sides are back at the bargaining table and are predicting the strike will be short-lived. All kinds of services are affected, including grain inspections and government call centers. However, a number of groups within PSAC have also reached agreements earlier this week, including blue-collar workers and Parks Canada employees. The community of Saudi is putting some teeth into a new dog control bylaw. Certain breeds of dogs will be banned. If you already own one, there's now a licensing fee. As Shannon Spring reports, the town is blaming irresponsible dog owners for the tough new law. A new bylaw in the town of Saudi is barking up the wrong tree for some dog owners. It bans any new pit bulls, Doberman Pinschers, Rottweilers, German Shepherds, dogs with a mix of those breeds, or any dogs that are deemed vicious. In a community like Saudi, we feel we do not need that type. If you already have one of these animals, you can keep it, but we'll be expected to pay a $250 licensing fee a year and you'll have to build a six-foot fence around your property. The mayor says if people don't like the September bylaw, blame irresponsible dog owners. Uh, we've had several uh, concerned citizens um, in the town of Saudi um, stating that they have been uh, chased by dogs, some have been bitten by dogs. Uh, we have dogs that are barking continuously day and night uh, due to the owners not being around. Town officials say the new bylaw will affect only eight individuals out of 700 residents, and they maintain the only thing the bylaw is doing is keeping community members safe. The Regina Humane Society disagrees. You're talking about a $250 licensing fee. If people can't afford that, what's going to happen to their dogs? They're going to surrender them, they're going to euthanize them, and it's going to mean many lives, and it's just unjust. Saudi residents have their own opinions. I do know a lot of people with well-behaved German Shepherds and, and um, I do know a lot of people with well-behaved children too, but I do know a lot of people that don't have well-behaved children and there's the same with dogs. It's unfair because old dogs can be just the same, it's all how you're brought up. Selby isn't the only community in Saskatchewan to have a dog bylaw. Places like Bigger, Meadow Lake and Mooseman have similar bans or restrictions. And the mayor of Selby says there are certain communities in Saskatchewan that have contacted him and are looking at implementing their own dog bylaw. Shannon Spring, CTV News, Selby. The RM of Sherwood, just outside of Regina, says its roads are being damaged by trucks trying to avoid all the construction in Regina. It wants the city to help pay for repairs. Mayor Fiaco says they have a valid concern. Wayne Mantica reports. Motorists have been avoiding Victoria Avenue East during the months of summer construction. Much of the Trans-Canada Highway traffic is now detouring around the city onto country roads. However, those roads weren't built to take the pounding, and it's causing maintenance problems for the rural municipality. We've been spending a lot of time with our equipment on this road and, and putting extra time here so that we haven't been able to work on other roads in the RM. So I had a meeting with the mayor and said, look, we have a problem here. And People who live and work in the rural municipality have noticed a marked increase in traffic. You know, we've seen the traffic flow increase and the condition of the road has uh, deteriorated a bit. So it's become a, a big concern for our business. The rural municipality has asked the city to share responsibility for repairing the detour routes. It thinks city crews should help. Mayor Pat Fiaco wants to be a good neighbor. Uh, if indeed it is a, a couple of graders that are going to uh, make a couple of passes, if there's, if there's uh, additional work that needs to be done, uh, again, uh, it, it's caused a bit of a hardship and 
uh, we want to make sure that, as I said, that we're, 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 we're working together as a region. Some motorists have found less traffic hassle on the detours and might continue using them even after Victoria Avenue East reopens. If that happens, the RM of Sherwood may seek long-term compensation for city people using country roads. Wayne Manteca, CTV News, Regina. Two Saskatchewan Rough Riders were in court today to face assault charges. 22-year-old receiver Jamal Richardson and his girlfriend, 22-year-old Siobhan Sweet, are accused of assaulting a woman in a Dudney Avenue nightclub on the Labor Day weekend. The matter has now been referred to the Alternative Measures Program, which means Richardson and Sweet will have the charges resolved through mediation involving the victim. That's just the easiest, quickest way to go. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just hiring a lawyer and just... Keep, it's going to have to be a hassle, you know, i got to keep flying back out here on the off season to deal with this matter, so this will be the quickest to resolve this matter right now. Richardson <laughs> and Sweet will be back in court April 21st. If they complete the program by then, the charges will be stayed. Meanwhile, teammate 24-year-old Emery Beckles is facing a more serious charge. He's accused of assault causing bodily harm. The incident happened at another Dudney Avenue nightclub that same night. Beckles made his first appearance today. Yes, ma'am. I mean, I don't have no questions. All I gotta say is I'm not guilty and I gotta go to practice. Excuse me. A stolen vehicle being pursued by police crashed at one of Regina's most dangerous intersections during afternoon rush hour traffic. This pickup truck was reported stolen on South Albert Street. When police spotted it going north, they activated their lights and sirens. The truck took off careened up the sidewalk at Albert Street and Saskatchewan Drive and got wedged between a concrete retaining wall and the post that holds the red light camera. The male passenger was chased down by police and is now under arrest. The driver got away. No one was injured, but the accident caused major traffic tie-ups during the rush hour. Two people have been killed in a collision between a semi-trailer unit and a small bus in eastern Saskatchewan. The accident happened at about 8 this morning, about 50 kilometers west of Hudson Bay. The bus was carrying eight people. The 59-year-old driver and a 42-year-old passenger died in the crash. Both men were from Ontario. There is no word on the condition of other passengers. The driver of the semi was not injured. RCMP are still investigating. A garage fire over the noon hour sent a huge pile of black smoke over Regina. This was the view from the CTV Skycam. The smoke could be seen for miles. Witnesses say the garage in the 2700 block of Makara went up in a flash. Only a burned out shell remained as fireworkers knocked down the last of the flames. The blaze attracted a large crowd of spectators. Investigators say the fire was deliberately set. They are now looking for suspects. A lawsuit over the murder of a group home operator may be settled out of court. The government is being sued by the family of Helen Montgomery. She was murdered by two teens who were placed in the group home she ran. One of them has been convicted of manslaughter but was still placed in the group home. The lawyer for the Montgomery family is Jack Hilson. He expects the case will be settled before next spring. I think I, I owe a thanks uh, to the media. I think that it's, it's been brought home to the government that, uh, that this is another case, uh, like Clausen, that the public too has a perception that, uh, that the government did not do right by the Montgomery family and uh, that there is a wrong that, that needs to be righted. And a Regina woman who had been reported missing for almost two months has now been located. The family of 51-year-old Kathy Claypool hadn't seen her since the middle of August. They were concerned because she had been in poor health. Police say Claypool has contacted them and she is in good condition. Well, the Regina Food Bank is the big winner in a corporate battle for donations. Tons of food were donated and the Saskatchewan Wheat Pool led the way in donations. In fact, a tractor trailer had to be brought in to make the delivery. Kristen Ellen Fleming reports. Regina's business community got a head start on World Food Day, which is Saturday, October 16th. 
Farm Credit Canada challenged seven downtown companies to drive away hunger and collect food for Regina's food bank. Keep getting little comments back and forth from the various CEOs in town. We're going to beat you, we're going to get you. And I said, okay, let's go. Let's have some fun. But the FCC knows that the real winners are the Regina Food Bank and the people it helps. There's a donation of over 6,000 pounds here from Farm Credit Canada alone. This is only the start of our uh, tower challenge. We're going to be picking up food around the city this morning. And uh, we anticipate that by the end of the day, we're going to have a very large collection of food. The goal is to collect 80,000 pounds of non-perishable food items through the challenge and Saturday's upcoming food drive. One Saskatchewan corporation that is no stranger to feeding people was not only up for the challenge, but bought out Safeway Soup Supply. It started really two weeks ago where the uh, employees came up with ideas, creative ideas through barbecues, bake sales, uh, bowling with frozen chickens, uh, very creative things, even pie in the face contest to raise funds for the food bank. And uh, it's been a tremendous success. Uh, over 23,000 pounds of soup have uh, been, uh, are being loaded into the trucks today. 23,000 pounds of soup! The food bank welcomes the help and hopes the community will get involved in Saturday's annual food drive. This won't last throughout the winter. Uh, we're still hoping for lots of garden produce and things. And uh, of course, uh, there will always be a need for a food supply uh, as long as we uh, have people who live in poverty in our community. World Food Day was established by the United Nations in 1979 to increase awareness about the problems of hunger and at the same time to motivate the public to address the issue. The Office Tower challenged it its part by raising awareness and over 30,000 pounds worth of food. Kirsten Ellen Fleming, CTV News, Regina. And Harry is here now for a look at all our weather details. And how can you tell we had a cold day? We've both got the turtlenecks out. <laughs> I know, chilly. It was very chilly out there this morning. Yeah, it was about, you know, a mix of sun and cloud today. We only reached a high of nine. So we mm. are seeing fall. Fall is here. So these are the temperatures that we are going to expect. So therefore, no complaining, I guess. I guess not. <laughs> Let's take a look outside at the Conexus Credit Union Sky Cam. And it was your typical fall day, just a little bit below normal, reaching a high of nine with a mix of sun and clouds. So the sun did peak out today. However, this low pressure system in the province that came in from the north and that is in the middle of the province right now. We are seeing our temperatures decrease uh, the increasing cloud cover and with that cloud cover we are going to see 60% chance of showers for most of the province. So at Regina we could see 60% chance of showers for this evening and for tomorrow we are going to still be under that same low pressure system 30% chance of showers and we are going to see the wind pick up for tomorrow. So hold on to those hats gusting anywhere from 40 to 60. Let's take a look right now to the north of us. Uh, showers for tonight in Prince Albert dipping down to five. Tomorrow, mix of sun and cloud and 10. Again, we are seeing the winds pick up for tomorrow. Saskatoon, some showers for this evening, dipping down to eight. Tomorrow, sunny and 11. But with that wind, it's going to feel quite cool. And the swift current region, uh, some showers for this evening, dipping down to seven. Tomorrow, mix of sun and cloud and 13. The Estevan region, 60% chance of showers for tonight and six. Tomorrow, mix of sun and cloud and 13. Again, the winds gusting to 74 tomorrow in the Estevan region. And Yorkton, showers for tonight and 10. Showers for tomorrow and a high of 10. And taking a look right now in Regina, Moose Jaw, some showers for this evening, dipping down to six. And tomorrow, mix of sun and cloud and 13. Let's take a look at the three-day forecast brought to you by Marie Jam and Moose Straw, the fastest growing General Motors dealership in the province. And Friday, mix of sun and cloud and three. Some cloud cover for Saturday and six. And Sunday, we could see some flurries for the Riders game and only a high of five. Let's take a look at your provincial temperatures. Your current conditions. And in Regina, and let's take a look one more time at the Conexus Credit Union Sky Cam. Well, that's not a great forecast. Mm. Flurries, maybe. I know. Go, Riders, go. Yeah, Riders fans <laughs> won't be liking that. Yeah, they'll be okay, though. They're, they'll tough they'll it tough. out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Harriet. Lee Jones in the next with sports. The Brandon Wee Kings are in Moose Jaw taking on the Warriors. Stay with us. Later. At a left point for Costarada to get Murray. He'll walk in the slot down. Will prepare. Shot scores. Good evening, everyone. The Warrior faithful are on the warpath in Moose Jaw. After six games, the Tribe have yet to post a victory, but perhaps tonight would be the night as the Wheat Kings stumbled into town after suffering their first loss of the season. 
Camera problems prevented us from filming the first period, so jump to the second. 3-2 Brandon, and they add to it on the power play. Eric Fair with his sixth goal. Later, Warriors with pressure, and who else? Kendall McArdle gets it all started with a wraparound try, but Mike Nickel makes a save not once, not twice, but thrice. Third period, more Wheaties on the man advantage. Jeff Topilko takes the feed at the circle and lets her rip. It's 5-2 Brandon. Then, just to be sure, Tim Conzerata is stuffed, but there's Tegan Moore as Johnny on the spot. Oh, his first goal, and yeah, I think I know where this one is starting to go. Warriors playing for pride. Ian McKenzie in front with a golden opportunity, but he can't beat Nickel, who made 33 saves on the night. Moose Jaw folks are still winless. They fall the week game 6-2. The Tribe will try to turn things around Saturday night in PA, where they hope to improve on the worst goals against average in the league. To the guys after, it was easy, uh, easy game to coach because everybody played hard and uh, uh, you know, we got contributions right across the board. Our fourth line scored two goals uh, in the first period for us, which, uh, which was huge and uh, I thought that you know, guys competed hard tonight. I think where things started to unravel is you know, we came out in the first period and we just worked them into the ground and we had a lot of opportunities and uh, as soon as we stopped working and let up, that's when they started scoring. And, uh, I don't think it was anything to do with one person. It was the whole team. And we had some, we had some veteran players that weren't weren't playing hard, weren't competing. And I, I thought we got a great effort out of uh, Justin Scott and Peeper and McKenzie and guys like that. You know, but they're not our go-to guys. They're not the go-to guys. I mean, you look on the list, you look at their who scored their goals and who was on the ice when the goals were scored. And it's the veteran guys, and we need more out of our guys. And. We can stand here and try to shelter that, but uh, they have to know themselves that it wasn't good enough. Well, I guess it could only get better. Well, with the winter weather here in Saskatchewan, the Regina Pats are no stranger to postponed games, but never because of ice problems inside the Agrodome. This afternoon, officials canceled tonight's game between the Pats and the Swift Current Broncos because the ice was too thin. Workers tried to get the facility in a hockey shape after Monday's curling event, but none of the Zambonis worked. The game has been rescheduled for October 26th. A frustrating result for Pat's GM, Brent Parker. Um, from what we can gather, they had a couple of Zambonis break down, and the third one, I don't know if they didn't know how to run it or didn't check it uh, beforehand, but it took some big chunks out of the ice and uh, uh, left it down to the cement in three or four places. So, unless we were planning on wearing rollerblades, we were in a tough position for tonight. Certainly, there's no fault of the hockey clubs. There's not much we could do, and. Uh, my feeling is if, if we were doing it, we might not be in this position. So, but uh, unfortunate situation, and we'll just move on. Believe it or not, the Pats game wasn't the only hockey game postponed tonight. Fire officials canceled the SJHL tilt between the Terriers and the Humboldt Broncos because they felt the Agriplex, which is still under construction, isn't safe. More from Christine Ouellette. It's not hockey night in Yorkton tonight. The Yorkton Agriplex is closed. We had the fire commissioner and the building inspector out today to do an inspection in our flexi hall uh, next door to the arena. And uh, during the course of that inspection, uh, they found that our exits weren't sufficient to get people out in a safe manner. The hockey club got the news around 3.30 this afternoon, and there wasn't enough time to move the game to another arena. The cancellation is even a bigger disappointment because on paper, the Terriers were favoured to beat the visiting Humboldt Broncos. They've had like three games in four nights. Uh, we we're hotter than a firecracker, and uh, now we got a coach that's hotter than a firecracker because of the circumstances. The scheduling was kind of in favor by us playing the Broncos tonight. Not saying, you know, not taking anything. Games aren't win on paper when they're one on the ice, but I think we would have had a little bit of an advantage, and it's disappointing that uh, tonight's game's canceled. It doesn't look like the Broncos are as upset as the Terriers. Those things happen. I mean, that's a. I mean, unfortunately, it happened. But um, what can you do about it? What costs haven't been determined. If we'd have known that we were just playing in Melville, uh, you know, we wouldn't have stayed overnight. So, you know, I know the executive there has, you know, said that the city will cover some of our costs. One thing's for sure, the fans won't be filling these seats tonight, but crews are confident they'll have a temporary system up and running for next Wednesday when the Terriers have their next home game. Christine Ouellette, TSN Yorkton. Thanks, Christine. Junior B action. Notre Dame and Pilot Butte to take on a storm, and there's no question the Hounds will be in a doghouse after tonight. First period, Jeremy Anderson puts home a rebound, makes it 1 0 for the storm. A little later, Travis Holland from the point. His shot tipped in front by Kyle Rudnitsky. The storm up by a pair after one period. Second frame, a, a Butte from Pilot Butte on the power play. Darnell Glass across to Jared Erickson. He spots the five hole for a 3 0 lead. 
Pilot Butte storming the Howe net all night long. Anderson will get a second of the night, ordering the wrap to go. This one starting to get out of hand. Another power play, and yes, another goal. Holland tees it up from the point. Ryan Gallant with the redirection to the top shelf. 5-0. The Storm go on to hammer the Hounds in this one. Oh, yes. 7-1 would be the final, while Fort Knox steals one out of Assiniboia, beating the Southern Rebels 6-2. To football now, the Riders continue to prepare for this weekend's game versus Edmonton, where a 25-point victory or more would clinch a home playoff game. But before the Riders can run away with the score, Kenton Keith is going to have to run away with a ground attack. Handing off to Kenton Keith. He's got a huge hole! During Saskatchewan's four-game winning streak, Keith has averaged over 125 yards per game, including a 161-yard effort last Saturday versus Ottawa. That performance was good enough for a second straight offensive player of the week. It's a lot of love, you know what I mean, from the running back to the old lineman. You know, we, they really trust me and I really trust them, so they 90 percent reason why I'm getting all these yards. We're playing pretty well up front uh, as an offensive line, but also Kenton, you know, he has that the X factor of speed, you know. When he hits a crease, it's you know it's tough to catch him. You know, hopefully I can get player of the week for the rest of the year if it keeps going down the way it goes. I mean, as long as my guys keep blocking the way they are. Game two of the ALCS between the Yankees and Red Sox. First inning, pinstripers get on the board. Gary Sheffield smacks a single in the center. Jeter scores to make it 1-0 New York. Jump to the sixth inning. One on for former J. John Allroot. And Johnny O delivers a laser beam over the wall and right. It was 3-0 Yankees. John Lieber would take over from there, allowing just one run and three hits in seven innings of work. Yankees take a 2-0 series lead with a 3-1 victory. Astros and Cardinals in game one of the NLCS. Houston showing off their power hitting. Four home runs, including this one by Jeff Kent. Astros up 4-2, but in the sixth inning, Houston, you have a problem. Five four cards. Tony Womack chops an RBI single up the middle. St. Louis up by a pair. Then with the bases loaded, Jim Edmonds steps up to the plate and puts this one to bed. A double down the right field line. Three runs would come around to score 10 to four. This one not in the cards for Houston. They lose 10 to seven. Game two goes tomorrow night in St. Louis. And that is your look at sports. More news coming up right after the break. Well, despite a poor harvest, there is still big demand for Canadian growing crops. In Yorkton, a milling company is expanding to meet the growing worldwide demand for oats. Desmalenka reports. Oats has now moved north, and that's what's provided a lot of growth to some manufacturing plants in Canada. Ian Slimman is wearing two hats right now, operations manager and construction facilitator at the Popwich Milling Corporation in Yorkton. Yeah, Yorkton is located in one of the three in the heart of one of the three largest oat manufacturing or oat growing regions in the entire world. It's a location that provides grain millers a strategic spot. The company was bought by grain millers in 2001, one of the world's biggest oat processors. Since then, the plant has quadrupled its operations. The current expansion includes a multi-million dollar packaging facility and a second rail line. Slimmons says the many changes and upgrades to the plant foreshadow the continual growth expected in the industry. But the quantity and quality of the crops can quickly change the upward path oat plants across Canada are on. Everything is impacted on where it's growing right out in the field, so it's a significant significant role to us. Oats from here are exported all over the world. Customers include Kellogg's, the breakfast cereal company. So the quality of the crop is crucial, affecting how much farmers get and who the oats are sold to. They rely on all sorts of characteristics of the oat and how much it absorbs from water to any liquids such as honey and whatnot in the granola bar. The expansion is a good indication of how business is going at the Popwich Milling Corporation. Slimmons says they could be adding to the 120 employees already working at the mill. Des Malenka, CTV News, near Yorkton. The artwork of a Cree artist from the Red Pheasant First Nation is getting national attention. Uh, to do the largest ever Aboriginal sculpture commission in Canada. Lionel Peach, whose sculptor is entitled The Four Directions, it has been chosen for more than 20 proposals to be erected outside the First Nations University. The 24-foot high sculpture of steel cable and borders is one of the largest Aboriginal art commissions ever awarded. It has four large bows, 
pointing to the four quadrants of the universe. The boulders at the base of the sculpture also have special significance. Uh, the boulders there are situated in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, a linear fashion. You could also, uh, I guess, uh, uh, represent uh, the path of life that uh, uh, most people go through, uh, especially uh, con continuing life from a university perspective. And, and uh, I guess uh, most, most likely just uh, uh, having a very successful career. Falls are dangerous. They injure thousands of workers and cost millions of dollars. Keep your workplace clear of anything that could cause a slip, trip, or fall. Let's build a safe Saskatchewan. A message from the Workers' Compensation Board and Saskatchewan Labour. Nature Custom Covers and so does Alfred's. Save a minimum of $500 today at Alfred's Fall Custom Cover Sale. Create a new look or match existing decor. Choose from many styles and hundreds of fabrics. Big custom cover savings on now at Alfred's. Well, just in time for Halloween, there's a celebration for pudgy pooches. Pugfest 6 took place this, place this week. Pug owners arrived in the event with their very well-dressed dogs in tow, some dressed as pumpkins, bumblebees, and some just in feathery hats. And get this, a wow. pet psychic was also in hand. Wow, how about Who that? Who knew there was such a thing? By the way, Judge Lanzito was not there. He's our famous Pugs predictor. Oh, he didn't make it this year? Nah, he's got his own celebrity show going. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody.